So, uh, as has already been alluded to this morning, the uh, recent performance of the EU labour market has been relatively weak. We had a rapid increase in unemployment when the recession began uh, in, uh, and a decline in employment between 2008 quarter two and 2010 quarter two. Then a, period, a short period of stability and then uh, since 2011 quarter one roughly uh, a further deterioration though at a slower rate than at the beginning of the recession. So over the period 2008 quarter two to 2012 uh, quarter three, we've had about an increase in unemployment of around 9 million, a decrease in employment of about 5 million, and an increase in the number economically active to uh, ensure that the labour market identity is met of around 4 million. So this is the track of what happened. The red line is uh, level of employment, and that's on the right-hand scale. And the uh, um, blue line is the track of uh, unemployment and the green lines indicate the, the points at which I say we've, had, we've seen some change in trends. <clears throat> so, there has been an increase in both male and female unemployment over the period, but seemingly quite different trends underlie this. So the unemployed population has increased slightly faster among men than women, but most employment has been lost by men whereas most of those who are uh, accounting for the increase in activity uh, have been women, women seeking jobs. Uh, the change in the working age population by comparison is, is relatively small, a small increase overall. So, an interesting gender contrast there, which I'm not entirely sure I can explain, but it is... Um, Interesting. One of the things that wasn't mentioned at all in the in the uh, in the previous uh, discussions, uh, and it's a, I guess a specialised kind of labour market issue, is around self-employment. And self-employment, unlike employment as a whole, has not fallen. Um, and just as underemployment may be an indication of a distressed labour market, it may now also be the case that the maintenance of self-employment is also an indicator of a distressed labour market because uh, people who have been made redundant, who have lost their jobs, see self-employment as one of the only options available to them. Certainly that's the case in the UK, where, uh, as indicated uh, by Maria, the overall part-time working uh, has been increasing, and there has been a large increase in part-time self-employed workers uh, in the UK. Um, so... Uh, um, that is one of the uh, interesting areas and, and, and a difficult one to touch, I think, with policy. Long-term unemployment has also been increasing. Um, about a year after the beginning of the recession, the proportion of workers who had been unemployed for more than a year uh, started to climb back up again. It is still not at the levels it was in 2005, so maybe something about policy occurring in the period 2005-2009 was responsible for that uh, reduction in the share of long-term unemployed, but um, since 2009 it has been trending back upwards. Um, David Blanchflower and I have been doing work on the well-being of the unemployed and we noticed a distinct difference uh, a distinct worsening of well-being once you cross that one-year barrier in terms of the, the, uh, the uh, duration of unemployment. Okay, I'm not going to step on uh, my colleague's shoes. Uh, just one graph on youth unemployment. Uh, youth unemployment uh, is continuing to rise, but the right hand uh, of these two panels shows that youth employment has really... Uh, uh, had a very, very negative trend uh, right since the beginning of the recession in 2008. So it has been falling very fast, whereas uh, overall employment has sort of stabilised. Uh, now, now we start um, uh, to get into some interesting policy areas. Here's a comparison of the US with uh, the EU, uh, uh, the uh, Green Line and the Eurozone uh, uh, the black line in terms of unemployment rates. And what you see happening is, uh, and which, what, what, what we t 
talk, teach our labour economics classes, beginning of 2007, the US labour market performing very well relative to that uh, in the EU, and you come up with a whole load of uh, inflexibility arguments as to why the EU may be performing badly. The um, US, however, experienced a very sharp rise in unemployment in the early part of the recession, and one argument about that is that the uh, regulations around um, unemployment in the US led to a lengthening of unemployment spells, uh, and, and that was part of the story around uh, uh, the increase in unemployment in the States. Then, of course, you get the effects of the fiscal stimulus in the States and the divergence since around the middle of 2010 with the US rate once again falling, <coughs> falling below the European rate. Now, <coughs> we've uh, we talked about variability. What this graph shows is the variance in European EU countries' unemployment rates. So there was a graph earlier which showed bond yields coming together in different countries in around 2007 and then diverging. Well, exactly the same thing happened, but with unemployment rates. Now, the bond yields have started to converge again. It is very much easier to have prices come back together than it is to have quantities come back together. So what this graph is showing is basically these, these kinds of contrasts, the huge increase in, say, youth unemployment, the blue line uh, in Spain, um, somewhat of an increase in France, and a decline, a consistent decline for all parts of the workforce uh, in Germany. And these are key countries, in a sense, if we're taking the overall EU picture, because they're big. So if we want to decompose the, the changes in unemployment, that's this graph, the next graph will be employment, and the following graph will be economic activity, you can see that of that 5 million increase in unemployment in the European Union, a huge proportion of it is accounted for by Spain. Um, some of the other countries have had big increases uh, in their unemployment rates, but they're relatively small. In terms of the aggregate, uh, Spain dominates. And then on the other side of the picture, Germany is the major offsetting factor. In terms of employment, Spain, again, is the country that has lost most jobs, and Germany, the country that has gained most jobs over this period. Many of the countries are pretty neutral on uh, on employment. Now this graph is on a smaller scale, uh, so the overall changes in economic activity, the numbers economically active, are relatively <coughs> small, and here you see the United Kingdom alongside Germany as having increased its economic activity uh, over, over, the, uh, over the period, um, and uh, only a relatively small number of countries, and these themselves being relatively small countries, have experienced some decline in the numbers economically active. The output shocks have varied in nature, but the labour market response has been incredibly varied. On the right-hand scale of this graph, you've got output. On the left-hand scale, you've got employment. The left-hand panel shows um, the UK and the right hand panel uh, shows the European Union. So in the UK, although employment fell initially, it has now risen back up to more or less where it was at the start of the recession, whereas output is still around 5% below where it was at the start of the recession. And you find something completely different happening in the EU as a whole. So again, the issue of divergence is an interesting one uh, to further explore during the, the discussion. And if we take <coughs> countries as a whole and look at how they've performed in terms of the relationship between output and employment, then the average for the EU as a whole is this green line. Now, if you're below the green line, uh, your labour market has done relatively poorly given the fall in output that you've experienced. 
If you're above the green line, your, your um, uh, labour market has performed reasonably well given the fall in output. And here you see Spain, Ireland, Portugal. It's not just countries that have um, issues around their labour market institutions that are below the green line because Ireland has a very flexible labour market. I think a more unifying uh, um, theme for them is financial crises. And I'll speak a little bit about that. Um, briefly, ours have taken some of the strain. These graphs go um, up and down of seasonal fluctuations, but generally a somewhat downward trend in average hours. And of course that impacts on, on <coughs> incomes and ultimately on levels of demand as well. So, <clears throat> two or three si slides to finish with. What it seems to me, uh, 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 or a number of commentators, is that the re recession is most severe and long-lasting if caused partly by financial imbalance in the private and or the public sector. Um, we haven't discussed construction very much, but construction is a very much a part of the story as far as uh, Spain is concerned, it's very much part of the story as far as Ireland is concerned. <coughs> and of course, problems in that area which are ultimately themselves caused by um, the failure of financial regulation then impact on the construction sector which in turn impacts on the young, primarily males. Who are, who are affected by that sector. The housing market, uh, if you've got that kind of problem, can then become sclerotic. You can have wealth effects associated with drop in, in housing values, which again uh, weaken consumption and are maybe part of the story as to why uh, uh, multipliers are low uh, in, this, in the countries that have adopted very uh, um, strong austerity programs. Um, so part of the recovery may involve policies to re uh, restore the construction sector and housing market closer to where it might be in a long run equilibrium in the previously it was well above that uh, equilibrium. So if you go back to the, the Spanish and Irish housing markets in 2005 to 2007, uh, they showed all the characteristics of a bubble. Um, okay, well, there are supply side issues. These have already been alluded to. Structure of contracts in the Spanish labour market um, may mean that risk averse employers avoid entering long term employment uh, contracts. But this is a long run supply side issue. It's unlikely to have an immediate effect on the demand for labour. And those countries uh, which uh, have suffered financial crises are suffering from chronic, chronic shortages of domestic demand. Um, in the UK, uh, our labour market isn't performing that badly. Um, everyone is uh, puzzled as to why that's the case. But we still have serious uh, 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 problems around clearly fiscal balances <coughs> and underemployment to some extent. So there, are, there, are, there uh, is a lot of uh, discussion about why we should follow Germany. And I love this uh, quote from, from Klaus Zimmermann about how it's really quite difficult to follow Germany. Uh, and, and that's because partly the effectiveness around uh, the absorption of young people into the labour market is a bottom-up issue which uh, many stakeholders uh, have have a, um, have a contribution to make to. So, um, a long-term goal for many European countries, but a difficult one to uh, to achieve. Um, and so, uh, l looking forward, last slide: uh, the goods market is still clearly in dif difficulty. Uh, we, th and that weakening demand is, is in part resulting from fis uh, fiscal austerity. Reforms will not bear fruit for some time. 
it seems to me that there is a limited collective will to fix these imbalances um, and in these circumstances labour market recovery is likely to be prolonged and imbalanced. I'm happy to discuss policies later uh, but uh, I'll just stop there.